today at the Future Female Forward, as we celebrate and recognize women achievers, we also laud their journey filled with failures, challenges, and roadblocks, despite which they continued their course to success and emerged as leaders. In our next conversation, we have many such women entrepreneurs who've beaten all odds and fought hardships to emerge victorious and established business models that are innovative, sustainable, and beneficial for the country's growth and prosperity. Telangana is a land of opportunity, and this youngest Indian state is home to 6,660 plus registered startups, 356 seed funded startups, 148 venture funded startups, over 3,400 incubators, and 150 plus purchase order rewarded. The state offers the conducive infrastructure, human capital, and sustainable funding model. So let's hear the Telangana homegrown stories of success from these superwomen. Please join me in welcoming on stage Mansi. Gandhi, co-founder, Dr. C. Mansi. Priyanka Ravala, head international programs, strategy and partnerships, The Hub. Kalpana Ramesh, founder, the Rainwater Project. Likita Bhanu, CEO, Terra Firma Projects. Deepti Alapati, founder, Pulp Cosmetics. And Shilpa Reddy, CEO of Saptagi Camphor Private Limited. It's a proud moment to moderate this session with power-packed panel of women at the Future Female Forward Initiative. Uh, so, Deepti, let me quickly, you know, start with you. Your brand was launched just a week before, you know, the world witnessed, India witnessed uh, lockdown, uh, you know, uh, logistic support was restricted, there was restrictions on shipment, and I believe you, what, logged about two to three lakhs of face marks order alone in just the first month. How did that happen? Talk to us about your business model. Before I answer that, I just want to tell everyone here that this is so special for me because I joined T-Hub as a second employee when wow. we were at St phase one. So I know Jayesh sir, like I've seen him on and off uh, quite a bit. So this is very special to be here. Um, so to answer that, yes, we launched one week right before the lockdown was announced. Hmm. Um, and everybody knows that launching a brand during a pandemic is just swimming across the tide. So we knew that we had to make some changes in the marketing strategy. And uh, two things that really worked for us was uh, we started building our brand advocates organically. So if anyone who knows a brand knows that it's very uh, quirky, very bright, we use very bright colors. So anybody who ordered a face mask got a really cool box. And whether that person had 100 followers or 100,000 followers, everybody put it up on uh, Instagram. So, because it was really Instagrammable, Plus, I think they love the customer experience. So mm. that worked really well for us because from one person to another, we were just building brand advocates. And the second thing that really worked for us was I think the pandemic really opened um, doors for a lot of startups yes. like Pulp because um, I think they were looking for brands that were very transparent um, and ticked all boxes. So I think that's really that really worked for us. All right, okay. Shilpa, let me now come to you. You know, you've carved your own success story in a male-dominated industry. Saptagir Camphor is a platform that provides innovative solutions for specialty chemicals and pharmaceuticals. Uh, you know, it is a leader in India and abroad. So tell us about your journey, your business, or should I call your successful model? So uh, I, I come from a finance background. First of all, I think that context has to be set. I have an MBA in finance worked in Fortune 500 uh, companies in mm. the US um, and 10 plus years back came, uh, came back to join the family business which uh, is primarily manufacturing. Uh, so we manufacture specialty chemicals, uh, camphor and fragrance ingredients as well as pharma and APIs um, and intermediates. So um, it certainly was a change from a Fortune 500 to a mid-sized family business where, uh, you know, shop floor acceptance took a while and, and I anticipated that. So I think the, the model to success, uh, and I tell younger women this, people, who, you know, ladies were starting out, women were starting out, stick around, you know, be there. People get used to you 
and eventually you know you get what you want so i think to get intimidated or kind of face that resistance and almost all of us have i think in industries which are primarily male dominated and i'll say that most industries are male dominated yes. i think other than a few sectors like education and so on uh you being there you providing solutions they knowing that you are there for them makes a big difference in leadership roles priyanka coming to you now you know uh, it has been a busy month uh, 40 hub the signing of mou with assam's numaliga refinery collaboration with collins aerospace and finally winning the national technology award for best technology business incubator so tell us more yes <laughs> So tell us more about T-Hub, how it is fostering innovation and empowering tech startups and its overall framework. Super. So firstly, welcome to T-Hub. T-Hub is the world's largest innovation hub as on date. Uh, so we are spread across 580,000 square feet of land. And at this point of time, we have 320 startups incubated in this space. And we have graduated around 3,000 startups in the last eight years. This is our eighth year in the ecosystem. um and we've been instrumental uh, in defining our own framework like a startup we evolved over the last 7 years right so we designed and gave to a framework which is called 6m 2p framework that we uh, offer to any entrepreneur innovator that's looking to uh, you know expand grow uh, the 6ms would be one access to money which is funding right uh, so we have a uh, team dedicated team who works with startups preps them uh, they also manage investor desk where they talk to angel investors vcs to provide various funding uh, venues for our startups then the second m uh, that we provide which is most crucial for many startups is market access so we work with 600 odd corporates uh, and we have 90 plus innovation partners across uh, the globe and we provide market access opportunities for the startups uh, in other geographies in india other state governments as well then uh, the third m that we focus most is on mentorship uh, where we have 150 plus mentors these are uh, high end individuals i would call them uh, they are the experts that come from 20 30 years of experience from a particular sector with a specialization that mm. offer expertise to these startups to upgrade themselves to provide quick tips on how to grow their journey okay and the fourth and that we focus is manpower and the fifth is uh, motivation and the sixth one is methodologies all these six m's are driven by two p's which is partnerships and policy advisory this is a simple framework that we use to accelerate entrepreneur success all right so thank you for taking us how you know t hub is empowering startups here in hyderabad uh, moving to you know uh, kalpana you're one of the very few women in hyderabad or in india that's taken up rainwater harvesting uh, tell me what kind of measures are you taking at your own company to empower more women to join the bad wagon or perhaps take similar uh, issues uh, first of all thank you for the opportunity to speak here um as a woman yes uh, rainwater harvesting actually is not just rainwater harvesting today um, you know uh, the way we have driven the company and the strategy that we have followed itself is an inspiration for millions of women to follow because we uh, are connected to availability of water right from the households to culture to religion to sanitation we are connected in a, you know a series of things so women are so connected to uh, you know water and its conservation only the awareness part is missing and what is the way forward because it's a huge behavior change uh, issue so while we um, run our startup we have to also uh, tackle behavior change and uh, bring that change in the society so today we have right from funders who are uh, women who have supported in a big way um, artists and artisans uh, who are part of culture and that and uh, our own uh, you know fraternity of architects and urban planners 
Uh, we work today with very, very young women who are conservation architects across the country. It's an inspiration for them to come and work with us. Absolutely. Because it's just not rainwater harvesting. We're doing um, rainwater harvesting. It's hidden in, in, in the entire ecosystem, like, uh, you know, well restorations, heritage uh, well restorations. We're talking about lakes. We're talking about a block where we make that block water rich. So we teach people that rainwater harvesting is just not... Uh, you know, uh, just like what we hear. So, Likita, quickly let me come to you now. At the young age of 22, you decided to enter the organic food business. What was that big idea that excited you towards this vertical? And talk to us about the support mechanism that you got. Um, I think uh, I wasn't thinking, <laughs> mostly, but I just... Uh, that worked well. <laughs> that worked very well for me. Um, but that is also a skill that I have kind of developed with time, is to not think too much of the outcome, and to actually go in and dwell and uh, look at the problem and solve it, which is most part of what business is about. Mm. And um, I was 22, but mostly the passion came from my mother, who was a farmer, and we both started the company together. And today it's a very surreal experience for me because at 24 I was featured on Young Turks with yeah. Shireen. And 10 years later I'm here. <laughs> so um, I feel that um, um, I also can see my journey as who I was then yes. and to who I am now. Uh, Mansi, let me now come to you. You know, uh, Dr. C is a new age diagnostics player. I, is a tech first healthcare provider, you know, you're delivering customer centric healthcare online and at home. So if you could take us through some of your offerings and the business model that you've devised. Sure. So we started in um, 2014 in the diagnostic space, yeah. but today we're building what we call the internet hospital. Our mission is to make healthcare accessible and affordable for the majority of India. So low cost and easily available healthcare. Uh, we're working on helping people screen at large numbers at home and then working towards helping them find treatment as well. So we service about 45,000 patients every month and help them through most of the conditions that they find through that. Yeah, and what kind of partnerships have you, you know, brought in so far? Um, we largely work with the ecosystem that exists in the geographies that we are. We work with healthcare providers that are in the top five or 10 rated in that city. Okay. And we partner with them, leverage their, tech, their advantage, their brand name and their expertise in the healthcare space and bring that to consumers. All right. Uh, Shilpa, you know, coming back to you in a career span of 20 years, and like you mentioned earlier, you've had extensive experience working with Fortune 500 companies in the U.S. Uh, tell me, what's the scenario of female uh, representation and leadership roles globally? Um, so I don't think we can be very homogenous in terms of what international leadership for women constitutes. I can talk about my own experience. Uh, and uh, the company that I worked for certainly had a very strong uh, female leadership nurturing program. And it started all the way from an analyst level as you entered into the finance roles to going up to middle management and then senior management. So that uh, ladder was very well built in terms of uh, how much uh, focus the institution put on it. You see that entire rung uh, up the hierarchy and then you understand that it's not that one woman CEO who sets an example. It's the woman who's ahead of you who sets an example on what you should do. So I think that to me was very, very uh, meaningful. It set the path in how I deal with younger women who are entering the workforce now. And it's very important. So we want to say this is how I manage my life. Okay, I'm not a superwoman. I failed enough and this is how I do it. and help them perform better.
All right. So, you know, let me now move to a topic that was discussed earlier in the panels as well, which is lack of funding for women entrepreneurs. And Deeti, let me come to you. You know, you started Pulp Cosmetics uh, with your kind of initial investments. Uh, tell me, what is the major transformation that needs to be done? So I think with startups especially, right? So I think initially when we start, we think that it's okay to bootstrap. It's okay to probably even wait until much later to get funding. But that's a mistake that every startup does. And I was lucky enough to have mentors early through my journey and I found investors. And it's important to find investors at the right time because you don't want to burn out, you don't want to, and mm. it also helps with scaling, right? So you need the cash flow to uh, scale the company. And if you don't have that, you can't progress. So I think it's very important to get the right investors at the right time and also not dilute too much of your company in the first round. Make sure that you're smart. And uh, yeah, we were kind enough by Until Ventures to fund but, us. So but did yes. you face difficulty in getting the right investors? Yes, initially, yes. People, people don't understand, investors, especially in India, don't understand beauty industry. Hmm. They, they think that it's a retail brand. So as soon as we launch, we make money in the next three mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. But no, there's a lot of R&D that goes behind it. And it's not as easy to, um, you know, make money like other companies do. So it was very tough to convince the investors, but I think I did okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Surely. All right, Priyanka, let me come to you. You know, as a startup ecosystem enabler, do you think running more uh, mentorship programs can help uh, solve the women entrepreneurs' uh, problem of lack of funding and help them perform better? Sure. I think uh, the mentorship comes more handy when you are in early stages, right? So you need a lot of information. You look for a lot of support in terms of understanding much deeper engagement into the market, market segments, how your product can scale in other geographies, scale in the, your own native market, right? That's where the mentoring piece play a very critical role in your early stages. Once you move past in your growth stage, you look more at advisory support in terms of opening up market access connects, opening up uh, pitching opportunities in front of investor. That's the kind of mentorship that you look at. So absolutely uh, designed, structured, well uh, outcome-based mentorship is what any startup would look for. All right, my next question is for the all of you and whoever wants to answer this. Uh, you know, you're all experienced entrepreneurs. Are you seeing a kind of shift in the thought process of investors? Are they more willing to now invest in women-led businesses? Go ahead. I actually have a counter example for sure. biases with investors. Would so love think, to hear that, yeah. <laughs> I think early on, um, maybe in the first couple of years of our journey, I mean, we're nine years into it now, I did face a little bit of bias being a woman founder and have two male co-founders, mm -hmm. one of which is my husband. Um, but I think as the company started scaling really well and growing really well, uh, I have almost faced no bias in the last seven years. And that's okay. actually, I think, shows the growth in the investment community today where people are accepting and understanding that women can do it all. Shilpa, what have we brought you? You agree my, with her? My, my view is the statistic. Uh, only 1.5% of VC funding in India goes to women. So 98.5 goes to men. Clearly. Long, long way to go. So there's a long way to go. And these conversations help a lot. I'll also point out that in the US, for example, only 1.9% of VC funding goes to women. So we are there for, if that's not a good comparison, but it's, it's equally bad across the world. Hmm. And across the world, we have a lot to go, long way to go, including India, of course. So that's my take on it. All right. Likita, you know, you've employed nearly 90% uh, women workforce in your uh, company, and that's quite a number. So tell us about, you know, what will it take really for more organizations to kind of ensure equal participation of both men and women? Um, I think it's important to understand the sector that I am in, which is the agri sector. So we employ a lot of labor. And we, we see that, you know, as Mr. Rosha also pointed out, that in a certain strata of the workforce, there is a lot of women participation. But as we go up, there isn't much participation in the leadership roles. And that's where I think 
that there has to be more reform and like people coming in and actually encouraging women. Though we are a hundred percent women owned business, uh, we do not have one single male director on our board. It wow. is, um, that, it that deserves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, we are. We constantly look for people because uh, I don't want to feel like the odd one out in my office. So we constantly look for people to come join us. Also at the factory, we uh, empower the local women to come and work. Kalpana, talk to us about, you know, similar to hers, you know, how you're empowering communities and women uh, to participate in the kind of projects that you're doing. So first of all, starting uh, with my own sustainable home. So 100 women in our community know what is a sustainable home today. Okay. And we don't talk sustainability in theory. We uh, talk sustainability in action. So uh, straight away, that's, an, uh, uh, you know, that's how we talk. And a number of talks, awareness sessions, uh, a lot of TED Talks, and so many uh, talks in the media about what is uh, you know, a harvesting rainwater, it's, you know, how logical it is and how circular it is. And today we've created a micro-economy by developing, a restoring a stemfill. We've actually created a micro-economy for... Yes. A hundred women who are who live around this stepwell, they have come up with interesting ideas to market their own products, food, and they make money out of it. So, I think we've gone in several tangents, and I'm I'm super proud of what I do today. Uh, Mansi, you know, tell us what kind of gender parity have you maintained at Doctor C? Um, so our team at Doctor C is squarely 50/50 men and women. Um, this is everyone from entry level all the way to management. And actually, uh, a lot of our managers are homegrown from the lower levels. So we're very proud of that. This was a deliberate effort on my part because I wanted the company to represent India and society, basically, in terms of diversity in you know, religion, race, gender, hmm. you know, different parts of India, that sort of thing. All right, Priyanka, you know, while the numbers of women-led startups have improved significantly, but the growth is not that impressive when it comes to, uh, you know, the female entrepreneurship index. So how do you think India can bridge that gap? So one, I think, to start off, we don't have a common platform where we have benchmarked the legends or the leaders who are experiencing the same challenges across the globe, right? As she rightly mentioned, India is having one of the largest women-led enterprises, but it's just 20% of what we are. So I think uh, blended financial mechanisms is one such uh, way to promote uh, women entrepreneurship. And we have, uh, I think Telangana has the first chief innovation officer woman, uh, Shanta driving grassroots innovation. We need to bring in leaders at that level mm. who can actually stand as examples, driving innovation, setting up examples for other people so that they can relate to it and, you know, go forward with it. Sure. You know, I, I need to mention this and Kalpana, you know, you're, you're known as the water warrior and recently you were honored with the pre prestigious Sujal Shakti Samman 2023. Tell me how essential it is for women entrepreneurs to kind of be recognized and do awards truly, uh, you know, benefit an entrepreneur's journey. Absolutely does, absolutely does, because it, it's an inspiration for 100 more women to see that, uh, you know, this journey is successful and you are recognized by the nation. I mean, at a national platform, at the Jal Ministry for what you do, you've been recognized. So that's a huge inspiration for a lot more women to step into this entrepreneurship, which is actually rainwater harvesting is a hundred is a multi crore business if yes. you if you actually strategize it and put it on the table and work around it and it is creating sustainability circularity and um, uh, not depending on uh, water from rivers and you are becoming sustainable as a city so i think women a lot lot more women can come into this arena seeing this success story from where to where i'm mean, starting i started as a architect and designer with my own sustainable home and where i've reached today so it's an inspiration for many people that you've hmm. uh, you've seen that you know on these platforms you've been honored and recognized i think it's a it's a Maybe a role model for few because yeah, that we, that I, didn't have, need. Yeah. I didn't have a role model to follow because I, I, I honestly did, wanted to do something about it. And I thought my eight years of journey as a, just driving awareness as an NGO didn't take me anywhere. Hmm. 
at the two years, the last two years of creating an enterprise for rainwater harvesting and creating my own DPRs and seeing how to implement smartly, it's, it's really got a few crores in the last two years. It's, it's something <laughs> I would, I'm so proud of. Yeah, Absolutely. And on that inspiring... I'm creating impact in a very, very big way. And on that impactful note, it's time for me to wrap up this conversation. Thank you so much, ladies. Uh, a huge round of applause for the Wonder Woman of Telangana. Thank you for sharing your stories of hardships and success. Many thanks for joining us this evening. Mm -hmm.